In today's video, I'm going to be addressing a question that I get asked all the time, and that is about dilution ratios for different detailing chemicals. So I'm going to be explaining how to work them out, regardless of what the dilution ratio is, and whether you're working in milliliters or ounces. And I'm going to be showing you some of the tools that I use to make the job a little bit easier as well. So first things first, I'm going to start off by talking about some of the things here that I find really useful for actually measuring out and diluting chemicals. First off, I've just got a plastic measuring jug, really cheap to pick up. This is very useful if you're diluting in anything that doesn't have measurements already on there, so I pretty much always use this. Then I've just got this 50ml measuring jug. Most chemicals that I dilute, I'm going to be using this for as they're typically sort of hovering around this amount of products. So very handy. I just got this one for a couple of quid from Into Detailing. You can jump on Amazon or eBay and I'm sure you can find them on there too. I've also got this syringe, which is great if I'm diluting chemicals where I really don't need that much product. So this is a 20ml syringe and it just allows me to be a bit more precise than this would when diluting sort of chemicals where I'm using a really small amount. I've also got a funnel, again useful if you're diluting into spray bottles as the opening isn't very wide and you might slosh chemical everywhere. And then I've also got this here, which I don't use too often to be honest, but basically how this works, and I'll grab a bottle to demonstrate, is that you just undo this and basically replace that with this. And you just screw it on the top. And basically, if you open up the tap just to allow a bit of air in and give it a squeeze, it will sort of fill it up. And there are some measurements on the side that will help you sort of see where you're at. This is really useful if you're using chemicals where the consistency is really sort of thin. It has that watery consistency. If you're using like shampoos and things like that, it's not great because the chemical sort of gets stuck in here and it can't really get up the tube. But it is useful and handy to have. So this was, again, from Into Detailing. I think it was a couple of quid just to pick that up. So first up, I'm going to be starting with a really easy dilution ratio, and that is a one to four. I'm going to be using a couple of examples here, but the process is exactly the same regardless of what dilution you're using. So the easiest way that I do is work out first how many parts you've actually got. So if it's a one to four, then basically what you just do is add those two numbers together. So the total number of parts is going to be five parts. Out of those five parts, you've got the one and the four. The smaller number, so in this case, obviously the one, and it's pretty much always going to be a one. That is going to be the amount of products you're going to be using and the rest of it is just going to be the solvent. So that will be water in this example. So next thing you need to know is how much actual total solution you want to make up. So in this example, I am going to be making up a total of 500 ml and that roughly translates to about 16 ounces. So the next thing you do is just divide that total volume by the number of parts it had. So obviously we've got a one to four ratio, so five parts total. 500 ml solution. So here it is just 500 divided by 5. So 100 ml is each one of those parts. If you're working in ounces, that's 16 ounces divided by 5, and it's going to be 3.2 ounces per part. So then you can just work out the number of parts of water, and I would recommend doing it this way around and pouring your water in first. As sometimes if you pour the chemical in first, pour water over the top, you can get sort of bubbles and it can overflow. So put your water in first, that's always the safest way to go. So in this example, there are four parts of water. Each of those four parts is 100 ml, so that is going to total 400 ml of water, and I've already got that measured out because I don't have a tap in here. So again, in ounces, exactly the same. Each of those parts is 3.2, so if you're going to times that up by four, you are going to get 12.8 ounces of water. So then you can obviously measure that out, and you've got the final bit is just to add the chemical. So that is that just one part that we discussed previously. So in this example, that one part is 100 ml or 3.2 ounces. So I'm just going to get my little measuring cylinder here and measure out 100 mil. So this is 50 mil. So I'm just going to measure up to the line and do a couple of these. And that is the one to four ratio sorted for that citrus product. And it is now ready to go in my IK sprayer. For the next example, I'm going to do something a little bit more complicated and go for a one to 25 ratio. The process here is exactly the same as it was previously though. So a 1 to 25 ratio, that one part is going to be the part of the product and the 25 is going to be the part of the water. So add those up together, of course we've got 26. And here I want to make 500 ml of total solution. So all I'm going to do is divide 500 by 26 and I'm going to be equaling 19 milliliters per part. So that means that we're going to have 90 millilitres of my actual product. So here I'm using absolute rinse or swash. And then we're going to have 19 times the 25, which is going to equal 481 millilitres of the water. 
So I've got my 481 millilitres of water measured out here. You don't have to be super precise with this. It's not going to be the end of the world. If you're a few mil out, it's totally fine to kind of round up and down. And then I've got my 19 mil of my chemical here. So I've used one of these sort of little measuring tools here to measure it out precisely. Is That's quite a small amount. So it's a little bit easier. So just take the cap off, pour it in give it a little mix and then that is ready to go in the spray bottle. So in terms of the water you actually use to mix these chemicals up in, does it need to be distilled or not? Now really sort of for most chemicals I don't use distilled water. I'm fortunate that the water in my area is pretty soft so it's not the end of the world. However there are some examples particularly with some chemicals and if you live in a hard water area where if the chemicals don't really interact very well with the minerals, it can sort of cause some problems. So in that case, you can obviously get some distilled water, usually local sort of supermarkets and garages will do it. As a very sort of generalisation, anything that I'm going to be rinsing on the car, I won't bother using a distilled water product for. However, if it's sort of anything like maybe a dilutable quick detailer, absolute rinseless, anything that I'm going to be putting on the car and not actually rinsing away with tap water, then at that point, it can make sense to use distilled water. But yeah, it's totally up to you. Give it a try and see whether it makes a difference for the chemical you're using. And it's also worth checking too, as some manufacturers will recommend distilled water and others just say use tap water. If at this point you are sat there thinking, I don't want to do any maths on my Sunday afternoon when I'm washing my car, that's totally fine. What I'm going to do is pop a link in the description to a page on my website where I've got sort of all the really common dilution ratios and amounts that you might want to make up in both millilitres and ounces. And it's going to give you the dilution ratio and exactly the amount you need to add of water and products for all those different ones. It also will give you a step-by-step -step on how to work it out if you don't want to rewatch this video. So that will be linked in both pinned comment and description. If you have found this video helpful, it would be brilliant if you could drop it a like and thanks very much for watching.